you again. You can call me Yes Man. We've completed the story of Fallout New Vegas by siding with House, Caesar's Legion, and the NCR. But there is one final way to resolve things here in the Mojave Wasteland, and that is to work with Yes Man. To do so, we have to go all the way back in time to the moment just before we confronted Benny at the Tops Casino. After confronting Benny, we found a hole in the wall of his bedroom leading to his secret workshop, and that is where we found... Yes, man. I covered this discovery in episode 3 of this series, which you can watch here. And in that video, we explored all of Yes, man's dialogue regarding Benny, the Platinum Chip, and why he's here. So we're not going to cover it again here. But during that conversation, we learned that Yes, man was programmed to just be helpful. But Benny didn't have the foresight to make sure that Yes, man was only helpful towards Benny. Which means now that we have Yes Man, we can use the Platinum Chip instead of Benny to take over the Strip. But we're just a courier for the Mojave Express. We don't have any plans for dominating local politics. But Benny had plans, and I bet he shared those plans with Yes Man. So after our introductions, we can ask Yes Man to tell us the details of the plan. Again, goal number one is to eliminate Mr. House and install my neurocomputational matrix on the Lucky 38's mainframe. Given how you're a new arrival, I also recommend that you get to know some of the region's tribes, so you can decide how you feel about them. By the time you finished up all of that, the Legion should be close to attacking Hoover Dam, and we'll execute the last phase of the plan. Oh, okay, pretty simple. Two tasks, eliminate house and get to know the local tribes. I think I can do that. With that, we begin the quests Wild Card, Change in Management, Ace in the Hole, and Side Bets. But before we go on to learn more about the local tribes, we can see if Yes Man has any ideas on how we can get rid of Mr. House. Say Mr. House was going to suffer an accident. How would that happen? It makes me feel really dumb to admit this, but I don't actually know. I've never been inside the Lucky 38. No one has. Mr. House is in there, though. It's the central node of his entire network. I've been in the Lucky 38. You have? Wow, that's amazing. You can murder Mr. House whenever you want. I mean, Benny was always scheming about how he was going to get into the Lucky 38, but you already took care of that. Wow. The other thing you're going to need is the Platinum Chip. You know, the one Benny killed a courier for over near Good Springs. It's at this point we can go ahead and get the Platinum Chip any number of ways. We could kill Benny or follow him to the fort and complete the Legion's quests to get it from Caesar, all of which I covered in previous episodes. But once we have the chip, we can go back to Yes Man and say, I already have the Platinum Chip. Of course you do. Sorry about that. And it's wonderful that you do. The Platinum Chip is the key to overriding and exploiting Mr. House's defenses. Did I just say exploiting? That's not a very nice word. All right, now we know how to get rid of Mr. House. But now let's talk about the tribes. So I should ask these tribes if they'll support an independent Vegas? Oh no, I didn't mean that. Who needs their support? The Securitrons will be all the support you need. What I meant is, you should get to know these tribes and decide which ones you like and which you don't. You know, shape the future of Vegas. Choose your neighbors. If you like a tribe, leave it alone. Or, if a tribe is nasty, or going to be a problem, go ahead and exterminate it. It's whatever you want to do. Which tribes should I get to know? There's a bunch. Some of them you've already met, like the chairman, for instance. I think you should visit the other families on this strip, the Omertas and the White Glove Society, so you know what makes them tick. And there are some important groups farther from the strip, too. Like the Boomers, the Great Cons, and the Brotherhood of Steel. All right, well, House is here in Vegas. He's not going anywhere. We can take care of him at any time. 
Let's focus on the tribes. What do you know about the boomers? They must be a really nasty people. I haven't heard a single good thing about them. They fire artillery on anyone who comes near their settlement at Nellis Air Force Base. Talk about rude. If they can be convinced to fire those big cannons at the Legion or NCR, though, well, that'd be neat, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would be neat, yes, man. We can work on it for a while and say, I'll get back to you about the boomers. Take all the time you need. Now, we've been here before. All of the four endgame factions wanted us to deal with the Boomer situation. We can simply kill Loyal and Pearl, the leaders of the Boomers, in which case we can go back to Yes Man and say, the Boomers won't be a problem anymore. I killed their leaders. Problem solved. Quick and to the point. I like the way you work. Or we can complete all of the Boomers' quests to achieve their trust, which I covered in a dedicated video about the Boomers that you can watch here. And once we have their trust, we can convince them to join us in battle at the Second Battle of Hoover Dam. Once they vow to support us, we can go back to Yes Man and say the Boomers have vowed to support me. Really? Talk about diplomatic skills. I mean, just not getting blown up was a success. Now they'll only blow up the right sorts of people. That's what matters. But the wild card ending is the only ending that gives us a third choice. And that is to simply ignore them. After visiting Nellis Air Force Base and meeting the Boomers, we can simply opt out, choosing not to kill them and choosing not to complete their quest. Instead, we can go back to Yes Men and say, I'm familiar with the Boomers. They can be ignored. Then consider them ignored. If they end up firing their howitzers at us, we'll ignore that too. Until it goes away. That's one down, four to go. <laughs> <laughs> you can always tell when he kind of disapproves of a choice you've made. He suddenly gets very passive aggressive. I love it. Next, we can have Yes Man tell us about the great cons. The cons are just... They're a dirty people. They live in tents like animals. And they're very rude. They've been kicked around a lot, but no one's finished them off. Not yet, anyway. How have the cons been kicked around? They were one of the tribes the three families pushed out of Vegas. A whole bunch got killed. So they settled at Bitter Springs, but they kept being so obnoxious, the NCR had to kill a whole bunch more of them. So then, they settled at Red Rock Canyon. There's just no getting rid of them. All right, I need to take more time with the cons. You set the pace. Like with the Boomers, we can resolve the con situation in a handful of ways. We can, of course, just kill them. If we kill the great cons and destroy their leadership, when we next come back and report in to Yes Man, we find an option to say, the cons have been wiped out. Yay! That's great news! You finished what Mr. House and the NCR started. That's gotta feel good. The remaining options become available based on how we chose to complete the cons questline. Oh My Papa, which I covered in a short series that you can watch here. If we convince the Khans to commit suicide as a tribe at the second battle for Hoover Dam, when we return to Yes Man, we find an option to say, I've set the great Khans on a path of destruction. Ooh, sounds dramatic. I like it. Wind them up and let them go. No more Khans. That's great. They're just bad people. Or if we convince the Khans to leave the Mojave Wasteland forever, we find an option to say, I convinced the Great Khans to leave the Mojave. Maybe they'll be devoured by giant scorpions. All sorts of things could happen to them out there. Man, he really wants them dead. Or if we convince them to side with the NCR during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, which I covered during the NCR ending earlier in this series, we find an option to tell Yes Man that we've convinced the Great Khans to support the NCR. Really? Okay, that sounds fun. That's not aiding an enemy. Not when you do it. <laughs> you can see him trying to work out the logic of our choice. His gears are grinding. But our final option is to say, I visited the Khan settlement at Red Rock Canyon. They can be ignored. If you say so, consider them filed away under not to be discussed again. That's two down, three to go. What do you know about the Omertas? Hmm. I remember that Benny used to pay a receptionist at Gamora for information. Maybe she knows something. All right, but do you know anything else about the Omertas? Just that Benny didn't like them. 
He talked on and on about how they couldn't be trusted. And this is coming from Benny. He hated their casino, said it was tacky, and he thought they were up to something, because he said they always are. All right, I'll check into the Omeritas some more. Whenever you get around to it, we'll be just fine. The Omeritas story plays out at the Gamora Casino, a drama I covered in a short series that you can watch here. And that drama can play out in a number of ways. If we side with the Omeritas, and as a consequence, the Legion, when we return to Yes Man, we can say, I helped the Omeritas perfect their plan to slaughter everyone on the Strip. You'd think it'd be bad for the Strip, but... I guess it must be good. Yeah! Take the strip down a notch or two, right? That'll show it. Okay. Or, if we sided with Kachino and foiled the Omerta's plot, we find an option to say, the Omerta's were plotting to destroy the strip, so I killed the conspirators. Wow. That is amazing. You are just a hero. I am serious. Or we can sidestep the issue altogether. If we at least talk with the receptionist and then head back to Yes Man, we can say, I know enough about the Omeritas to know that I want them left alone. You got it. I won't say another word about them. That's three down, two to go. What do you know about the White Glove Society? From what I understand, they're perfectly delightful. They're cultured, clean, and super polite. Benny didn't like them, though. He said they were creepy. All right, I'll let you know when I'm done evaluating the White Glove Society. Don't hurry on my account. I'm the one with a flexible schedule. We discovered the truth behind the closed doors at the Ultralux Casino in my short series on the White Glove Society that you can watch here. If we chose to resolve that conflict by siding with Mortimer and fooling the society back into a life of cannibalism, when we return to Yes Man, we find an option to say the White Glove Society needed a little help getting back to basics. That's all. That's great news. I wish I could visit their casino. They have a refined sense of taste. Or if we not only help the society return to cannibalism, but also convince them to side with the Legion, when we next visit Yes Man, we find an option to say, it took some doing, but I convinced the White Glove Society to support Caesar's Legion. You did? That's, well, that's an unusual approach. But I know it makes sense somehow if you're the one doing it. The problem is me. Or, if instead, we sided with Marjorie, we can go back to Yes Men and say, the White Club Society had a cannibalism problem, but I solved it. A cannibalism problem? Really? I'm so glad you weren't eaten. Or if we don't even want to deal with it, after visiting the Ultralux, we can return to Yes Men and say, I spoke with Marjorie and Mortimer, I say leave the White Club Society alone. Say no more, say no more. If you say they're good, they're good. That's four down, just one to go. Finally, we can say, what do you know about the Brotherhood of Steel? They go around in big suits of power armor and they have lots of energy weapons, but there's a downside. They just have a thing about technology. They think it should all be theirs. If someone else has it, they get mad. All I'm saying is, not much of a chance they'll accept a Vegas that polices itself with robots. I'm not ready to decide what I want to do with the Brotherhood yet. Give me some time. No rush. Take your time. I covered the Brotherhood of Steel and all of their quests in my videos on the Hidden Valley Bunker and on Veronica. We can destroy the Brotherhood of Steel's bunker, killing everyone inside, in which case we can report back to Yes Man and say I destroyed the Brotherhood of Steel's bunker. You really know how to make a robot happy. Seriously, you just made my day. Or we can convince the Brotherhood to support the NCR. This option only becomes available if we've completed the Brotherhood quests, left McNamara as Elder instead of Paladin Harden, and then went far enough down the NCR ending until we got to the point that Colonel Moore sends us to destroy the Brotherhood. I covered all of this during the NCR ending of this series. If we choose this option, we can return to Yes Man and say, I convinced the Brotherhood to support the NCR. Really? That's... Well, that's a surprise. They'll really want to blow me up. But maybe dumb machines like me ought to get blown up and scrapped for salvage. Who knows? Not me. <laughs>
I think that was the most blatantly disappointed Yes Man sounded in our decision so far. Or we can simply ignore them. And after visiting the bunker, we can go back to Yes Man and say, I know the Brotherhood, I want them left alone. Okay, consider them forgotten, along with the projections that predict they'll be our biggest enemy. Forgotten! That accounts for all the tribes you needed to get to know. As soon as Mr. House is out of the way, things will be great. There will be so much I can help you accomplish. And with that, we complete Wild Card Side Bets, which as you can see, builds upon a lot of the work we've already done in this series. We now need to go kill Mr. House, but there is another task Yes Man wants us to achieve. Now that we have the Platinum Chip, Yes Man wants us to find out what's hiding within the bunker at Fortification Hill. That's right. Like I said, it's probably pretty important because it has non-standard hardware, just like the Lucky 38. The data on that platinum chip is a big secret, unless you can find a dedicated reader to decode it. Isn't that frustrating? I'll go check it out. Neat. Let me know what you find out. And with that, we begin Wildcard, You and What Army. We have a lot to do. But with the tribes of Vegas out of the way, our next closest enemy is Mr. House himself. Let's deal with him. If something happens to Mr. House, I may be in touch. I'll be waiting right here. And so we head to the Lucky 38 to assassinate Robert House. This goes down in exactly the same way it does when killing House if siding with either Caesar's Legion or the NCR. There is no way to create an independent new Vegas while leaving House alive. But instead of going in guns blazing, one option I didn't cover in a previous episode that may be more useful is to use the wall-mounted terminal to open the antechamber, which turns all of the robots hostile. But then, instead of engaging them in combat, we can race to the terminal in the console by the window and activate a security override. That turns all of the Securitrons neutral, as well as the ceiling-mounted turrets. Then, just like last time, we unlock the elevator door using the wall-mounted terminal next to it, take the elevator to the control room, cross the catwalk, and then open House's microbacterial chamber using the terminal. Once exposed, we can hasten his demise, rather unceremoniously. There is a challenge we can achieve here, if instead we kill him with a 9-iron, which I covered earlier in this series when siding with the NCR. With House out of the picture, we can head back to the Tops Casino and report back to Yes Man. Oh! Hi again! Can I help you with something else? Mr. House is out of the picture. You already took care of Mr. House? Wow, you work fast! Well, that's everything. House is gone, and I dealt with the tribes. I'm ready for you to join me back at the Lucky 38. Mr. House is out of the picture, and you have the platinum chip? Wonderful. Let's go. Even though he says, let's go here, he doesn't actually follow us. Instead, we'll meet him back at the Lucky 38. Isn't this exciting? I know I'm excited. So... Heading back to the Lucky 38, we can take the elevator to the penthouse, where we find Yes Man waiting for us next to House's old monitor bank. Hi! This is big, huh? A very big moment. Here goes. I'll just take that platinum chip off your hands. Thanks. Wish me luck. Mr. House had quite a setup here. I can access his data banks and view telemetry on every Securitron on the network. Wait, so that's what the platinum chip does. Interesting. Mr. House had a whole demonstration planned for you. Just head downstairs to the lowest level to check it out. You'll see. Now we saw this demonstration when we sided with House, but I'll show the whole thing again here because part of the charm of siding with Yes Man is his unique way of delivering information. Plus he was voiced by David Foley, and there's no such thing as too much David Foley. Step closer to the demonstration area, please. Okay, so you're familiar with Securitrons by now, obviously. I mean, some of your best friends are Securitrons, right? <laughs> Our titanium alloy housing does a good job for protecting our delicate electronic insides from small arms fire and shrapnel. 
Our left arm contains an X-25 Gatling laser, quite deadly against off targets at medium range. That looks like fun. And for close range suppression and crowd control, we have this handy dandy 9mm submachine gun. Nice. All of this is old hat, right? Here is where it gets interesting. Turns out that those are our secondary weapons. All this time we've been running the Mark I operating system, which doesn't have drivers for our primary weapons. Imagine! Now watch this. I'm downloading the Mark II OS to all Securitrons on the network. Makes quite a difference. With the M235 missile launcher, we can engage ground and air. And a rapid fire G28 grenade launching system makes those deadly in close range engagements. Woo! Look at that! The OS upgrade also includes drivers for our onboard auto repair systems. Just try to hurt us now! All together, this software upgrade confers a 235% increase in combat effectiveness per unit. New Vegas finally has soldiers worthy of protecting it. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. You can come back up and see me or be on your way. I know you're a busy person. With that, we appear back at the penthouse, and having gotten this far with Yes Man, we complete wildcard change in management, and we fail a number of faction-specific quests. Now we have to infiltrate the Legion headquarters at Fortification Hill to find out what Mr. House had hidden within the bunker beneath it. Those who have been following this series already know what's hidden there, but for those of you who haven't, I'll be sure to cover it in my next episode. If you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. We are almost done. This is the final faction we can side with in all of Fallout New Vegas. Since we've covered most of the content in the game in other episodes, this final faction ending is going to be shorter, spanning only a handful of videos. But I'll be sure to continue this ending, along with other content from other games, in the days and weeks to come. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs you can't find anywhere else. My shirts come in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find a link to my shirt shop in the description below. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. More than anything, I'm so thankful that you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so very much, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos. Hmm.